Hey everybody and welcome back to another Darkfall video. Today we're going to be making particles follow a path. As you can see in this kind of example here, probably most of you know by now, but I'm creating a 2D game and you're probably sick of hearing it by now, but within that game I created this particle system where when you send troops to a certain area, you'll get this animation just to sort of demonstrate troops moving from one area to the other. And a few of you asked how did I do that? So I thought I'd make this video and show you guys how to do that yourself. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. The first thing we need to do is align the camera. So you can either do this in top view by pressing number pad seven, or you can go to front view by pressing number pad one, which is what I'm gonna do. And then to align the camera, if we hold control, alt, and then number pad zero. Now, unlike 99.9% .9 of my tutorials, we're not gonna delete the default cube. We're actually gonna use it today. So let's go ahead and scale it down a little bit and move this out of the way just so it's not inside what's going to be rendered. And since we have this selected, let's go down to the materials properties, which is this icon here. Now it already has a material, but we're going to change this. Let's change this surface from principled. We just need to go to the top here and change this to emission. Then go ahead and change the color. Now we don't actually see anything changed here. So let's change the view. You can either choose viewport shading or go to rendered view. It's entirely up to you. So now we have this, this is going to be uh, what the particle system uses as objects to render. So these are going to be kind of our troops moving across the land. Next, let's go ahead and add in the map. To do that, I'm going to shift A, go down to image and add image as planes. And if you don't see this option here, just go to edit, then down to preferences. Then in the add on section, just search for image as planes. And then just go ahead and check this box and you're good to go. So shift A, image as planes. So just navigate to the folder where you've saved your image to. Go ahead and select it. And we also wanna make sure that we change it from principled to shadeless or emission, whichever you want, I prefer shadeless. Go ahead and import this. And it's a little too small, so go ahead and scale this up and fill the screen. And there we go. By the way, this map was created in a previous tutorial. If you wanna check it out, there will be a link over here. And it's pretty much just a stylized map um, go ahead and create your own. Once you have everything in place, let me just get rid of these distractions here. Once you have everything in place, we can now go ahead and add the particle system. So you can use any object that you want. I'm just going to go shift A, go to mesh and add in a cube. That's really big. So I'm going to scale this down and then I'm going to place it in position where I want the troops to come out of. So this is going to be our kingdom here and maybe scale it down a bit more because this is the particle emitter. It's going to emit the particles and go in which direction we want it to. So maybe make it smaller and place it around here. Now let's go ahead and add the particle system. So let's go down to the particle properties, which is this tab here. Then go ahead and add a new particle system. So if you're familiar with particle systems right now, what we have is when we play this, it's just kicking out a bunch of halos, which if we just pause this and then render it, we can see it's actually nothing. So basically these are just for the 3D view, just to kind of show you how it's gonna look before you add your object. And we can also see that since gravity is turned on, they're just going straight down. So let's just jump back to the first frame. We can fix the gravity problem by going to scene properties up here, and then just go down to gravity and turn it off. Now, if we play through again, we can see they're just going into different directions, which is okay. Now, obviously we want this to follow a path. So we need to add one more object. So let's do that. I'm just going to move my 3D cursor over here, shift A, and if you want, you can use a curve. Any one of these will do, but I'm going to go to mesh and add in a plane. Now we can see we have our plane here. If you want, you can rotate it. So press R to rotate, then hit X to constrain it on the X axis and then press nine zero. We can, uh, we can also see it's behind the map. So I'm just going to press G and then press Y and just move this above the map. Now you're probably asking, why do we need a plane? Well, we don't actually need a plane. We just need one vertex. So hit tab to go into edit mode, select any one of these points here. Then I'm going to press control I just to select the inverse, which would be these three here. And if you press G, you can sort of see which ones are selected. Then go ahead and press X and delete the vertices. So now we're just left with this one right here. Now we can press G and bring this over to the starting point, which would be over here. I'm not sure how easy this is to see, but hopefully you can kind of get an idea. So this is where the vertex is now. Then if we press E to extrude and then just move this down here and then just keep pressing E to extrude and kind of make this path. And you can make this as detailed as you want or be quite rough. 
we could add a modifier and smooth everything out but for now I'm just gonna kind of stick to this road and go to our end point so I'm gonna speed this up so you guys don't have to wait around all I'm doing is pressing E to extrude and then clicking just to add the point where I want it to be so there we go I've just now gone from here to here now I'm gonna press tab just to go back to object mode if your lines are very blocky and need to be smoothed out just go over to the modifiers tab add a modifier and go down to subdivision surface so if you want you go ahead and apply this and then the next thing we need to do is convert this to a curve and that's really simple all we need to do is bring up the search operator for me it's spacebar but for you it could be f3 depending on your key configuration then all we need to type is convert and then we can choose convert to a curve so now this is a curve and we can see that the icon here has changed to a curve which means we could now go down to the physics and enable force field and if we change this from point to curve and then if we play through now we can see it's kind of affecting it not in the way that we want it to but it's definitely affecting it which is good then all we need to do is just change a few of these settings so strength we can see if we increase this let's see what happens it's just pushing this even further away even faster so let's go into the negative numbers let's try negative one or negative 1.9 and we can see it kind of gets attracted to it so we're going in the right direction so let's just increase this a little bit more so around maybe minus 20 let's try this again and we can see it's a lot faster so we can assume that this is going to push or pull the particles faster or slower depending on these values whereas the flow this will keep it closer to the line so right now zero it's not really going to try hard if we increase this to say something like two let's see what happens now we can see it's trying to stick to it a lot more so by playing around with these settings you can get something that works for you so let's increase this all the way up to 10 and see how that looks and now we can see it's giving that trail which I'm looking for obviously it cuts off short and it's far too many so and this is the time where you can sort of play around with it and get what you want if you want one long stream of men going straight to a different place that's fine but what I want is kind of a clump of men marching off to the distance so let's just jump to the first frame and select this cube then if we go to the particle system so a thousand is far too many so I'm gonna go so I change this to a hundred it can start on frame one and we don't want it to end on frame 200 I want this to have a burst of men come out and then stop let's change this to something like maybe 18 now the lifetime again will depend on the distance so let's just increase this to say 130 something like that now if we play this we can see that they sort of go there and then come back so the lifetime is far too long so we want them to stop around here so 71 let's try that again that looks better we do need to set an object to be rendered so let's go down to render as I mentioned it's rendering as halos which are invisible so let's change this to object then go down to the instance object and we can select any object that we want or if you want to use this tool here and this will just pick from any object that you select from so we just jump back to the beginning and play through this and that's looking much better so once you're happy with it make sure you bake it so to do that we just have the cube selected or the emitter depending on what you're using and if we just scroll back up and we have this section called cache or cache if you're fancy <laughs> And then what we need to do is just click this button here which will bake it and again since it's really small it's going to be pretty quick so you don't need to wait around and now we can grab this cube move it out of the way since we no longer need it same thing for this line we can move this out of the way as well and there we go so press f12 make sure we're happy with it how it renders um, if you want to add some more effects you can do that in the compositor but when you are happy with it and you do want to render it out <laughs> make sure you go over to output set your resolution make sure this is 100 that's important we can set the start and end frame also the frame rate but then go down to output and we want to make sure we save this to somewhere that we will remember and then once that's done go ahead and change the file format uh, if you want to render this out as an image sequence you can go ahead and use an image file but if you want to render this out as a video go ahead and select ffmpeg video 
then go down to the encoding and we can select this icon here which is a preset icon and then we want to choose H.264 in MP4 format then all you need to do is go over to render and then render animation or you can use a shortcut which is Control F12 so hopefully you found this video helpful if you did be sure to hit that like button as always thank you for watching and I'll see you next time